kind of think that Pride and Prejudice and Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing have a lot in common, and so I wanted to break that down in a video. Obviously the most basic similarity is that both novels are romance, and both novels are romance between characters that kind of get off on the wrong foot or don't seem to like each other at the beginning. That on its own is a very general similarity. There are plenty of works of fiction that fit that pattern, but it is what first drew my attention to it, so it's a good place to start. Elizabeth Bennet and Mr. Darcy very much get off on the wrong foot when they meet. She makes assumptions about him, he acts kind of snobby and proud towards her. They do not like each other. It takes about half the novel just to get to the point where he likes her, and then even longer for her to realize that she also likes him. And they both seem to be falling in love in spite of their better judgment in a lot of ways. Beatrice and Benedict from Much Ado About Nothing have more of, I think, a friendly relationship at the beginning. They definitely don't get along, but the way that it's described is very different from the dynamic between Lizzie and Darcy. In Act 1, Scene 1, Beatrice's uncle Leonardo explains it this way. You must not, sir, mistake my niece. There is a kind of merry war betwixt Signor Benedict and her. They never meet, but there's a skirmish of wit between them. A skirmish of wit, a merry war. It seems to be a much more playful dynamic than the outright hostility that Lizzie has toward Darcy at the beginning of Pride and Prejudice. In fact, the way that they have known each other for a while and already have this kind of dynamic established, and there are some hints at past history between them that aren't ever fully explained, it almost reminds me a little bit more of Emma Woodhouse and Mr. Knightley. Emma and Mr. Knightley have known each other for a long time. He is very vocal in his disapproval of some of the things that she does, and she just kind of seems to see him as her brother-in-law and nothing more, up until, of course, later on in the novel. So that sort of long-standing relationship between two people who don't always agree but don't really dislike each other, it reminds me a little bit more of that than Elizabeth and Mr. Darcy. However, let's keep going because there are more similarities. For one thing, the relationship between Beatrice and her cousin Hero reminds me a lot of the dynamic between Elizabeth and Jane in Pride and Prejudice. Whereas Beatrice is very outspoken and has a sharp wit and kind of a fiery temper, Hero is very polite and proper and kind of the ideal for what a woman was expected to be. And despite their differences, the two get along very well and care very much for each other. The relationship between Hero and Claudio, while it's not as central to Much Ado About Nothing as the one between Beatrice and Benedict, it is a pretty important part of the plot, and the two kind of interweave together, with one influencing the other and vice versa. And this is where I get to another important thing that the two have in common, which is scandal. Jane isn't the one to bring scandal on the Bennet family, although there is a little bit of unwanted interference in her relationship with Mr. Bingley, and he's convinced that she's only after his money, and so he leaves, and there is a breakup between them that's based on inaccurate assumptions that turn out to be, in the case of Pratt and Prejudice, just Darcy jumping to conclusions and not really based on anything in reality, but also not really bad intentioned. Whereas in Much Ado About Nothing, Claudio is tricked into thinking that Hero is being unfaithful to him, which is very much an evil scheme by the play's villain. Benedict initially seems to take Claudio's side and assume that Hero has wronged him, but when Beatrice confronts him, she manages to convince him that her cousin is innocent and that the right thing to do is to stand up for her. Which is a big deal because Benedict and Claudio are good friends, in the same way that Darcy and Bingley are good friends. And because of this, Beatrice and Benedict are able to save Hero's reputation and her relationship with Claudio. In Pride and Prejudice, the friendship between Darcy and Bingley doesn't go so terribly wrong. It's actually Mr. Wickham who creates the scandal by running off with Lydia, Elizabeth and Jane's youngest sister. But in a very similar way, once Mr. Darcy finds out that something has gone wrong and that one of Elizabeth's sisters, and by extension Elizabeth herself, is facing scandal, he jumps in and tries to put things right. Now, I feel bad for Lydia having to marry Mr. Wickham because even she doesn't deserve that in my opinion. 
But of course, with the time period being what it was, that was really the best possible outcome that they could hope for. She remains respectable in the eyes of society, and her sisters avoid being tainted by the scandal. What I'm getting at here, though, is the ways in which Signor Benedict and Mr. Darcy interfere in these scandals on behalf of the woman that they are in love with. And then, of course, like most romantic comedies, they have a very happy ending involving a lot of couples that have liked each other getting together and getting married. Everything that has gone wrong up until this point becomes kind of water under the bridge, and they all lived happily ever after. Of course, there are questions about, you know, how happy those happy endings would be, particularly for Hero and Claudio and for Lydia and Mr. Wickham. But it's certainly framed as a happy ending. And then finally, there's a slow progression with the main couple from really not liking each other, or at least not getting along very smoothly, to developing feelings for each other that they are not sure how to express, to sticking together even when things get complicated, and him standing up for her and her family member who is facing a scandal, and getting married by the end and seeming like they definitely are going to live happily ever after together. Even more than just the fact that they take a while to warm up to each other, the way that the romance progresses seems very similar in both. Now both Much Ado About Nothing and Pride and Prejudice I know are seen as predecessors to the modern romantic comedy genre, and there are many works that came after that follow a similar pattern. But I think it's very interesting how much they resemble each other, even despite being written by very different authors and centuries apart in time. Overall, while I'm a fan of both Shakespeare and Jane Austen, their work usually doesn't remind me of each other very much. So I think it's fascinating that these two just have so much in common.